Howdy, Possum Patty here, and I and the whole entire Soggy Bottom gang behind me here <laughs> would like to wish you all a Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all my new subscribers. Welcome, welcome, and Happy New Year to all my returning awesome possum peeps. <laughs> well, I decided that I was going to ring in the new year by making a ring bound journal. Now, if you are a possum peep, you will remember my little golden book, Alice in Wonderland, Mad Hatter's Tea Party, Tea Tuesday, Four Sisters Cafe, Junk Journal. <laughs> I know that's a mouthful, right? And I made this with six rings. I can list below, um, in the basement down below, um, in the description box on how I did this. This is a super fun journal. I would love to talk about this <laughs> right now, but I would just go on and on and on. Well, let me just show you a small peek inside. The pages are all super bright, super colorful, and all different shapes. And there's actually journaling on each page and the pages have been painted and decorated. This is my favorite. I did this teapot. <laughs> well, anyway, if you want a closer look, like I said, I'll put the playlist below down in the basement. Now to tell you the truth, I had zero interest in making a ring bound journal. Now I love to watch everybody's videos and I love to watch people making all sorts of junk journals and even the ring bound ones, even though I had no interest whatsoever in making one for myself. Until <laughs> one day I was watching someone make a ring bound journal and she had tied all these little bits of fabric scrap around the rings. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love, love, love that. I just love how it looked and how it felt and the texture and the color. And I'm like, I have to make one of those. So that's when I took this little golden book and made this journal with the rings. Now you don't have to use six rings like I've used on here. But because like I showed you, the pages are all different shapes and sizes. I wanted to be sure to have a ring in all the places to attach those different shape and size pages, if that makes sense. Watch the playlist, you'll understand a little bit more. So this is now one of my fave journals. And I, like I said, I just love this. I love it. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe it's about time I make another one. Now I have been talking about making a lighthouse journal. And I also said that I had an old potato chip box down in the magical basement, right? And I was gonna look for it, but I never found it. But then of course I was looking for something completely different and I found it because you know, that's how it goes, right? So anyway, long story longer, right? I brought up the two pieces of corrugated cardboard with the lighthouses on them, the ones I'm going to use to make my lighthouse journal. And I had actually cut a piece of cardboard, which is over here somewhere, to make a little spine. And I was going to start putting it together. And I just stopped. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll put rings instead. So I'm going to make this little journal, and this is just corrugated cardboard. Like I said, it's one of those little boxes with individual bags of potato chips inside. And because the contents inside the box were individual bags, the box is not dirty or greasy at all. So I figured it's a good one to use. I cut this down to, it's like about a seven inch square, just about. And I have, some different rings. I have like these large ones. I like this size, but I only have two more of those. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put these big ones on there for now because I have these little ones, but these are going to be too small with the corrugated covers. It's just not going to be big enough. So I'll use these for now. And I think I got these at Walmart. So let me just give you an idea about the size of these rings. Now my fave over here, if you go by the inside diameter, the ID, it is an inch and a half and almost an inch and three quarters with the OD, the outside diameter. But we'll stick to the inside. The inside diameter is an inch and a half. And those are my fave, an inch and a half. Now these large rings, I think the large ones are from the Dollar Tree and they're two inches. And the tiny ones are from the Dollar Tree and the inside diameter is an inch. So these little ones are an inch and these large ones are two inches but my fave are the inch and a half <laughs> walmart dollar tree i believe don't hold me to that dollar tree all right so i'm going to use these large ones because i don't have enough of these to put three on the cape cod one yet i put six on there but i'm not dealing with that right now um, the pages are all going to be the same size, so I only need three. You can put two, but two, I think the cover is just a little too unsteady, and a three kind of holds that middle in. So we're going to do that. So if you would like to make a very simple journal with me today, you just need two scraps of heavier cardstock, magazine cover, cereal box, it doesn't matter. Cut it to any size you want. Get some rings at the Dollar Tree or the Walmart, or maybe you have some office supplies laying around, or school supplies maybe, and some old paper, some fabric scraps, probably a hole punch, and we'll be ready to go. So come on along. So basically, there are only three steps to making this type of journal. Step one, grab something to be the cover, punch a couple holes in it. <laughs> Step two, grab some paper, any kind of paper, punch some holes in it. Step three, put it together with your ring. You are done. It's almost like instant journal. <laughs> it can be done in a matter of minutes. Now I'm going to add a couple extra steps in there, all optional. Um, you don't need to do them right now. You could build the basic junk journal now and add these things later on. It doesn't matter. Any way you want to do it is just fine. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with my cover, but before I punch my holes, what I'm going to do is put some paper on the inside and cover the inside. Now, because this is on a ring, it'd be very easy to take the Journal of Heart and do this later on. So if you're not decided about what you want to put on the inside of the cover, you can save this step for later and move on to the next step. After I put paper on here, I might go around the edge a little bit. Now, I might paint it or put some marker. I have some gold marker. Or I might put some washi tape. I have some anchor washi tape. Or I might even put a piece of fabric on there. Or you can put paper. Or you can just get some paint. Maybe and paint around the edge. And then put it aside and let all that dry while I pick out the paper to put inside. So I haven't made up my mind. You know, I like to work intuitively. And that's the artist word for... I'm really not sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> and you don't want to tell people, I don't have any plans. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I don't know what's going to happen. No, you say, I'm working intuitively. So what comes to me at that point, that's what I'm going to do. All right, stop yakking and pick out some paper. I have this huge stack of paper that I got at the flea market really cheaply this past summer. 
I buy things at the flea market in the summer, and then I journal with these, <laughs> with the paper and, and the washi tape and all the stuff that I get all winter long. Saves me a lot of money. And it gives these things a new home. I, I'm going to look quickly. This is my cover. And I'm going to be looking at that. Now, this is just plain sand. And sand might be something fun to put on the inside cover because you know what? Then I can decorate it with things as I go along. Sand with some shells. Ooh, this is pretty. And I've got two of them. Can't get the sky and the beach in though. A little too big. We got water. Ooh, this is nice. Sort of a wave motif. And then there are these sets. This one vendor had just tubs of scrapbook paper. And I went through and I picked out a whole bunch. And then towards the end of the season, he had a lot left over that he was selling a little cheaper. And most of it was, you know, down to the ocean paper. I'm just looking at this Mystic 2016. <laughs> Look at the price on here, $13.50. I probably paid about 50 cents for this. This is pretty, but not for the inside. And then this is a really nice scrapbooking kit with a whole bunch of these sets. Oh, this one's really nice. This is a Julie Nutting. So I bet you the paper in here is really pretty. Oh, and I could use one of these tags. Her heart belonged to the sea. The voice of the sea speaks to the soul. You know, I can put some paper and then put one of those there. The sea stole her heart. Oh, I love that one. Or I can do hello and write what this journal is about. Hmm. All right, let's look and see what paper is in here. I'll come back later and pick out the paper for the inside of the journal. I'm just picking out some paper for the cover right now. Oh, and these are stickers. Okay, that side's stickers and this side's cut apart. And there's two of those. Oh, this is cute. Double sided. Ooh. Oh, I love this. That goes with this, doesn't it? Her heart belonged to the sea. That is an option for the inside of the cover. There's those um, Julie Nutting little girls there. And that might look nice with this. This one, the sea stole her heart. Let's see what else is in here. I think we're gonna find our cover. A lot of the original kit seems to be here. Yeah, but the two big ones. All right, <laughs> getting nowhere fast here. Like I said, this whole journal could be done in five minutes. <laughs> so you know this is going to take me an hour. It might take me two hours. But that's just me. Yeah, just a little interruption there. But now I'm back and I really didn't plan on going this fancy. You can put anything you want on the inside of your cover. But while I was yakking on the phone, I kept cutting up little pieces of paper and layering. So basically they're both just about the same, sort of like a scrapbook, <laughs> scrapbooking page design or something. And I took a background piece of paper and I made sort of like a, a strip out of a different pattern. And then I put the large journaling card. I distressed everything with salty ocean, distressed ink, appropriate. I put a sticker across the top. And on this one, I put a sand dollar. 
I put one of those Julie's dolls on here and a little sailboat down there that matches the sand dollar, polka dots, polka dots. And I love the contrast between the background and the yellow border of the card and the polka dots and the stripes. And just makes for a very visually interesting page. <laughs> I did this one first and then I did the front cover. Just about the same thing. I had a background page, a journaling card, and a, a strip of paper with a really pretty little star design that like really matches this card. And this is a sticker and the shell is a sticker and then I added the doll there. And so those are my inside covers. <laughs> Not a lot to do with lighthouses. Now I have a ton of paper with lighthouses on it. But, you know, I don't know, I pulled this out and it caught my eye, so I used it. I don't like to save anything <laughs> for another time, right? If I want to use it, I want to use it. I'm looking for a glue paper here. And let's see, making sure everything is going in the correct direction. So that's got to get put on there and I use glue stick but I'm now I'm going to use probably this tacky glue. I enjoyed creating those little end papers. You can do whatever goes along with your idea. And this is something also that I really love to do and that is take true junk like the potato chip box <laughs> and mix it up with some bought items something a little bit more expensive to, bu to buy but like I said I got this at the flea market it was really cheap kind of cute though okay this is corrugated cardboard not my fave to work with, but I'm going to try and get this glued down. So I'll do the other one and come right back. What I did is I took my long ruler and I marked the middle. This is seven inches. So three and a half is the middle. I came in from the top down about an inch and from the bottom up about an inch. And I came in about six sixteenths, about that much. <laughs> You don't have to be precise. Just come in enough so you can punch the hole and not have it too close to the edge. You probably want to get all the holes in about the same amount because that'll make the rings work better. Now I might have to get Mr. Possum to help me punch this because the, you know, the arthritis in the hands. I don't know if I could do this. You know, the brain, she's broke. <laughs> And sometimes you just have to stop and think a minute. I had taken out the small hole punch, but for this corrugated cardboard with the cardstock on the back, duh, I have a We Are Memory Keeper hole puncher thing that works very easily in a situation like this. Yeah, so the only thing you have to remember is, you know, sometimes... You just have to think about functionality and that's part of your paper engineering. So you want it to function. You can make it look any way you want, but it's got to function. So by putting all the holes at the same distance, you're going to get a little bit better of a function. And also you have to think about the rings. If you have really small rings, you don't want to go too far in. But if you have large rings, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to punch the other side and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now I am going to cut some paper. And this is almost seven, so maybe the paper is going to be six. And you've got to make sure it's going to fit with these holes here. And I might do six and a half. Or maybe I'll do six and a half by six and a half. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do six and a half by six and a half. And I'm not sure how many papers I want to put in there because 
I can always expand it or take paper out because it's ring bound it gives you lots of options so I'm gonna get that pack of paper back up here on the table and cut some pages down and I will be right back so I've cut a um, about 24 pages <laughs> about approximately and they're all approximately the same size and now what I have to do is this is the back this is the front this is mark where I want the holes and punch a bunch of holes so I want this to sort of be centered with like a quarter of an inch at the top and a quarter of an inch at the bottom and maybe in just a little bit from the edge and then you've got a little bit here because you might want to put borders on the pages or something but you want it pretty close on the inside like I said because that's where the holes are going to be so I'm just going to eyeball this, and I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to mark the first page like this. And then I'm going to use this page as my template so that they'll line up. So this will take me a while. <laughs> It'll take me a while. Yep. So I've had the idea to do this for a couple of years, well, at least two. And then Christina at Christina's Check, she made hers last year. And oh my gosh, it's a beautiful journal. I'll link that below so you can go pay her a visit if you haven't seen her video already. And it's a tall, thin, sort of trim line style, slim line, trim line, whatever they call that. <laughs> I'm just checking to see how this lines up before I use this as my template. That looks really good, really good. And she had a book about lighthouses, and it was a big book, and she cut out all these beautiful, tall lighthouses and put them in her journal. And I told her, I says, oh, Christina, I was thinking of doing one, and I had saved my potato chip box. <laughs> and then we had visited a lighthouse the other, you know, like, oh, back when she did her video, it was like shortly after we had visited a lighthouse. And now the first lighthouse that we went to is in Stonington. Connecticut but we also visited a captain's house so I think that beside the lighthouses I will you know add things you know shoreline places of interest shoreline places of interest how is that <laughs> Yeah, I think that'll work. Shoreline places of interest, like, you know, old sea captains' houses and old houses like that that are down the shore or anything related to the sea, or like Mystic Seaport where they have the old ships and things like that. And then I think there's a few mu museums around that we can go to that have things about ships in them and with the rings yeah I can make this journal larger or smaller whatever I want to do and I think I've changed my mind while I'm thinking about it I think I am gonna go with these rings to start with instead of these larger rings and I'll just put one at the top and the bottom and then when I get to the Walmart I'll just buy another pack and put one over there I think that'll work out fine. All right, step two is finished. I have all my paper with the holes punched, and now I'm ready for step three, 
It's just three easy steps or make it as complicated as you like, like I do. <laughs> it's just putting this together and let's see. I always want to work in the opposite direction. All right, we'll do it this way. All right, we'll do it from the back so you can see the papers. And like I said, I'm going to use two rings and then I'm going to put the paper on. This is the same paper as the lighthouse, but the other corner. And I love the lighthouse, but I'm not thrilled about the back of the paper, which is beach balls, but I could always cover that up. And this just has a bunch of beach words on it, but I love the banners. So I wanted to put the banners on there and got some octopi there. And this just has yellow stripes and I thought that looked cool with the banner. Some of these papers are double sided. Some are single sided. I thought these look cool next to each other. Some are lightweight. Some are heavier weight. They are from all different packs. Like this one's really heavy. Wow. That one's really heavy. And we got some fish, some stripes. Put the orange with the stripes. And I got more stripes on this side. <laughs> Lots of stripes. And this color goes good with that one. And this side's got polka dots. We're changing it up from the stripes a little bit to the polka dots. And oh, which goes with this paper. How fun is that? Octopi and anchors and sailboats. And whatever is white, I'll change that when I journal on the page. I don't decorate every page ahead of time. I save that for when I do my journaling. Because, you know, I'm not making journals to sell. They don't have to be all decorated with pockets and all that stuff ahead of time. I don't really like those two together. Let me put some here so that has a blank like that. I'm going to put the water with the sand. And I'm going to put these two together. And more sort of a water motif with the sand. Here's some fish. Some are more like photorealistic than others. I might do this. Some are more cartoony. Some are just patterns. Now this is paper, but I love this wave motif. So I'm going to add that in there. And we got some more sand. This one's kind of glossy. And some water. I wanted it to be a little bit more oceany than beachy, but you know, we're going to go with shells and sand and things too. I did like these two colors together. And, and then I've got these fun lobster pages here. I got anchors, <laughs> anchors and polka dots. And I love this, like a little sea village, like Mystic Sea Village in Connecticut, which is like an, a vintage whaling village. Kind of a cool place to go to. And seahorses. And just some weathered wood, but I love this color. Some more of the beach balls. And then there's my lighthouse going to go on the first page and maybe I'll journal here about how I'm going to journal about lighthouses. <laughs> and then I've got my cover and that goes on like so. Journal. <laughs> I mean how easy is that? Two pieces of cardboard and some paper and you have a journal. Yes I know I said I was going to decorate the edge. I haven't really decided what I was going to do with it yet. But I'm not in a rush. I can come back and do that anytime. Now on this journal, I put all the ties where the the hinge is. See the hinge in there? And I kept the ties close to the hinge so that this part is free to open and close like that. So I'm going to put the ties back here. Now what size? The size depends on how big or small you want them. 
I thought this was a pretty good size here. So they're just ripped pieces of fabric and they're not all the same exact size. Some are a little longer, some are a little shorter. But I wanna, I'll take one off to give you an idea and to use that as a measurement. So I put in how many knots? That was one knot, probably two or three, just regular tie knots on top of each other. And they seem to stick pretty, pretty well. That looked, felt like it was two knots. So this strip of material is, it's about six inches long. So when you tie it, it's gonna be less than a three inch tie. And it is, ooh, they can be like, oh, an inch wide, three quarters of an inch, half an inch, something like that. And I also added some tool. And you can put ribbons, Whatever scraps you have works perfectly fine. You can put charms on the rings, whatever you would like to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a few strips and come back and show yeah. you. I'm folding these in half because I made them kind of wide. But that'll just let them fluff out more. And I'm looking at the cover of the book while I'm doing this. And it's reminding me of the song, I Want to Marry a Lighthouse Keeper. Now I am not a singer, but I have a voice. <laughs> so sometimes I do sing. So if you'd like to sing along with me, go right ahead. <laughs> Help me out here. I want to marry a lighthouse keeper and live by the side of the sea. I want to marry a lighthouse keeper and keep him company. I'll polish his lamps by the light of day so ships at night can find their way. I want to marry a lighthouse keeper and won't that be okay? <laughs> Did you sing with me? I hope so. Well, I hope this gave you some inspiration to ring in the new year with a ring bound journal. So easy to make, very simple and quick. <laughs> it does take some time to pick out papers and punch holes, but you know, it's just very relaxing and fun. It's, it's a definitely a no stress, no sew <laughs> journal to make out of scraps of things you already have at home. So thanks for coming along and I hope you stay tuned because I will come back to finish this up as soon as I get another ring. And I, I have another idea for a diff, little bit different kind of ring bound journal also. And I want to share that with you and maybe I'll do some more videos on some other very easy to make junk journals. So I just want to wish everybody happy junk journaling. Bye-bye.